As soon as people start making significant money off any type of investment, but in particular crypto, people start to question, well, should they be using a business structure to hold those investments to potentially save on tax? Today, I'm gonna to cover that topic, especially for those here in Australia. Hello everyone, my name is Ethan Rushok, and a common question I get asked is, should I be investing my crypto within a business structure? And they're normally asking that from a tax point of view because they're thinking, well, if I invest as a business, I'm gonna save a lot of tax. So I wanna explain how that actually works and is it actually beneficial? Will you actually save any tax? Now, I have done some videos on my channel before about business structures and what the difference is between them, so go and check that one out if you're interested in that. But today I'm gonna to be talking about crypto in particular and talking about when it might make sense to use particular business structures. So the reason why people start to ask this is they may go, well, I've made some good gains off my crypto. A lot of people then maybe get a little bit carried away and think, oh, well, if I invest more, I'm gonna make huge amounts more. But the general concept is they're going, well, I'm paying a higher rate of tax. So I'll use an example of a really simple situation to start with. Someone that's already got a significant amount of normal taxable income, so they may be in a really high paying job, and they've got, for instance, say $200,000 of income from work, so from employment income, and then they go and make a $100,000 gain. So what they wanna know is, how is that gonna be taxed in their individual name? What are the tax ramifications of this gain? So now we can look at their marginal tax rate, which is gonna be 45 cents plus the two cents Medicare levy, so 47% of that gain is gonna be taxable. Assuming they've held for that less than 12 months, we're gonna end up with a $47,000 tax bill. Now, if we look at if we've held for over 12 months, we get that 50% discount, that tax bill essentially gets halved. So we're gonna pay $23,500 on it. So you can see why people are starting to go, well, that's a lot of tax, you know, 47% of what I've made. How can I reduce that? Maybe a business structure would be right. So we have two options here in Australia. We've got a trust or we've got a company. So I'll go through both of those, talk about the benefits and some of the downsides to each and maybe why someone would choose that business structure. So I'll start with a company and this is kind of what people typically think because a lot of people have heard of companies. So they go, oh, lots of big businesses are run through companies. Oh, I wanna own a company. They kind of get caught up in the word company and think, okay, well, it would make sense for me to hold my investments in that. That's gotta save me some tax. But that's definitely not always the case. So the way a company works is a company will pay tax on its profits and that will be at the company rate, which is a flat 30% for most companies and then we have the base rate company, so a lot of small businesses, which I think is down to 25% now. Now obviously that sounds really enticing because that's a lot less than that 47 cents to the dollar which we explained in that previous example. So people go, wow, that's gonna be a significant saving. But there's definitely some downsides that you've got to understand with a company the biggest being that a company is not eligible for the capital gains discount. So it doesn't get that 50% discount. Now you can see that definitely is gonna make a huge difference when we're looking at these calculations. So even in that previous example on the highest tax rate, if you hold for over the 12 months, your effective tax rate on that is down to half of that 47 cents. So it's down to 23 and a half cents. So that's lower than what the company tax rate is. So you can straight away see where that downside to not getting the discount for a company can make a significant difference. So as I said earlier, with a company, they'll be taxed on their profits, but for those profits to go back to the shareholders, they've either got to be distributed normally by a dividend or potentially as a wage or director's fees, just depend on who's involved and how it's set up. But eventually they will be taxed at an individual basis, but normally they will be attached to a franking credit for the credit for the tax that the company has already paid, but you're still eventually gonna pay tax as an individual or potentially receive a refund if your marginal tax rate is less than the company tax rate. So that is the pro to a company, is you do have that bit of flexibility about when that dividend gets paid to those shareholders, for instance, and based on maybe what their taxable incomes are gonna be in those years. So you might have an individual shareholder that has no taxable income one year, and then when the dividend gets paid out, they get a franking current refund as such in their individual return and pretty much pay no tax on that income. But that lack of a capital gains discount can really significantly reduce the benefits to this strategy or even put you in a worse off position. So a situation where this might actually make sense, if someone is on a higher income 
and they're investing in crypto that's going to return a lot of ongoing income. So it might be staking rewards or airdrops where they're going to have a high taxable income each year for the company irrelevant to the capital gain system. So therefore, it may make sense to hold those crypto assets within a company, pay that lower company tax than what their personal marginal income tax rate is, and then distribute in future years, maybe when it makes more sense. The other thing you need to consider as a company is the cost. So you have set up costs of actually physically setting up the company. So that's typically gonna vary from maybe $700 up to about two grand if you're getting advice on that as well. You then have ongoing ASIC fees, which I believe are between $250 and $300 each year. And then you're likely gonna have increased accounting fees because you're gonna to have to get a tax return done for that company, potentially tax advice, etc., which can just all add up. So that's something you gotta factor in is what are you saving in tax if this is the only reason you're doing it versus what the actual costs are ongoing. The other structure I wanna talk about is a trust. And this definitely can work for more people, I think, than a company. So typically what people will do is set up a discretionary trust. So that means the trustee has discretion about how the income of the trust, how that profit is distributed to its beneficiaries. So this gives a lot more flexibility that we have these capital gains and we can distribute those capital gains to the beneficiaries. And that may be 70% to one beneficiary and the balance of the income to the other beneficiary, for instance. And we can use that to potentially reduce the overall tax paid. Now what's good about a trust is it can pass down those capital gains and then they're eligible for the discount still. So you still get that capital gains discount on the sales of the crypto. So you can see how that straight away is an attractive prospect compared to the company structure where you don't get that discount. So something you do wanna ask yourself if you decide that you're going to go down the path of setting up a trust is who are actually gonna be the beneficiaries? It's no point setting up a trust just for tax purposes if you're the sole beneficiary because you're going to distribute all that income to yourself. While the trust can pay tax itself as the trustee, it pays it at the highest rate of tax. So it doesn't logically make sense to leave the profits within the trust. You don't get that flexibility like a company really to choose which years you're going to distribute those profits out. So you're obviously gonna look at who are gonna be the beneficiaries. Is it going to be a husband and wife? Have you got adult children potentially that aren't working, they may be studying that you could distribute income to? Have you got retired parents that aren't working, they're not on a pension, maybe you can distribute income to them. So suddenly you might have multiple people that can distribute the income to, therefore potentially splitting up that taxable income and potentially reducing the overall tax. Now, obviously a lot more goes into this. You potentially may have to seek legal advice on these kind of things, seek accounting advice. Obviously this is just very general information. So make sure you go and seek your own personalized advice when you're looking at these types of structures. Something else you have to consider with the trust then is again, those ongoing costs. Does it make sense to pay the ongoing extra accounting fees, the setup costs of the trust, any legal costs that you may incur? to just save a little bit of tax. Is that saving of tax going to outweigh those costs? In summary, it shows that just setting up a business structure doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be in a better off position. Don't just go and set one up thinking, oh, all the smart people have trusts, all the smart people have companies, therefore I'm gonna do that because it's gonna save me a lot of tax. Because as you can see, these structures potentially have downsides to them or extra costs that may outweigh the benefits. There isn't a particular number that goes, oh, as soon as you're making $100,000 a year, you must have a company or you must have a trust. There's lots of factors that go into it. It's gonna be things like, okay, who are the beneficiaries? What are their current taxable incomes? What are their future plans? Are there other legal reasons? So there may be legal reasons why you wanna hold an asset in a particular entity. These are all things that you gotta consider and it shows that it's not just one size fits all when it comes to business structures and investing. I really hope that's been helpful to people. Make sure you do get in touch with me if you need help with this kind of stuff because I do help clients with this. I can talk to you about your individual situation and see whether it makes sense to set up a business structure. And as always, make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe, go and check out some of the other content on my channel. I really appreciate you being here and I'll talk to you again soon.